The music's gone weird again. It does that weirdly for some reason when I start recording. Anyway, we've got to put 5 litres in the 10 litre and the 7 litre. I've gone back to reach that. Ah. Put that in there. Not you. Put you in there. Put you in there. Four, three, three. you in there. Put you in there. No! No, put you back in there. God damn it, this is stressing my brain. Come on, think die hard. Die hard, man. Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis. And then the German guy. No! Ah! Oops. Oops. Ah. Oh. Oh. Ah. There we go. I accidentally moved the recording screen size. I went from 193 then down to 191 and all over the place. Jesus Christ. I did it. I got it in the end! I did it! Yes! Oh! A bit of brain power. Well done, if you keep at it long enough, you'll eventually come across a solution. The shortest possible solution requires nine moves. I, don't, I think that's probably nine moves because I didn't like one go. Well, one go is in, I didn't have to put stuff back into the same one I just took it out of. Thanks. Now I can finally start on these on those scones. There must be some way I can return the favour. Well, this being a restaurant and all, come by and eat whatever you like. It's on the house. I'm going up a gizmo. Ooh, the back body. Nice. Just a head left to do, I think. Then we'll uh, save. Scroll all the way down. Carry on. Oh, apparently we talk to him again. Are you looking for Franco's bridge crank? I heard he went missing. Been sulking quite a bit. Franco is a thick-skinned guy, but that bridge is his life. I've never seen him so down in the dumps. Okay. We'll leave. Then we go. Right, and then we talk to this guy. Hey there, you've been pretty busy solving puzzles, yeah? If you want to pass through here, you need to solve at least 12 puzzles first. But it looks like you've already done that. Yep, we have. Well, I guess I just lied to you then. If you really want to pass through here, you're also going to have to solve one more puzzle. Oh god, there's going to be a doozy in it. Oh, it's only 20 out of 20. 
Dice below look normal enough, but if you look carefully, there is a pattern. You know the following? A equals 0, B equals 9, C equals 6. So what does D correspond to? Well, it's like A equals 9. It's just the dice turned a little. That's what I think. If I would have to do this without looking at hints, or the walkthrough, that would be my answer. Well, let's look at the hints. Look at the different dice shown. Well, look up from your game and think for a moment. Can you think of anything in your environment that shares a strong connection to numbers? It's something just about everyone sees on a daily basis. <gasps> oh, I get it! I get it! It's three o'clock! It's time! Time! It's not dice, it's time! A. Both hands at 12. B. 12 and 9. C. 12 and 6. D. 12 and 3. So what the hell do I type in? Let's get more hints. The first hint says that the dice share a connection with an item in your environment that most people see on a daily basis. However, these item, this item has come to take a completely different shape recently. Yes, it has digital. The newer version of this mystery item shares no connection with this puzzle. The dice... Yeah, horrible taste in my mouth. The dice represent an object you are very familiar with. In fact, you probably have one hanging on your wall or strapped to your wrist right now. <gasps> that's a big hint right there. So, that's what I type in. Apparently, I type in that. That should do it. Aha! Critical thinking is the key to success. Critical thinking is the key to success. That's right, the dots on each die represent the hands on an analog clock. Right there. Way to go! You've earned it, sir, so come on through. Are you still after that scary cat? We are looking for one of Ryan Hall's employees now. He's a man by the name of Raymond. You haven't seen him about, have you? Raymond, huh? Um, I think I might have. Oh gosh, where'd I see him? Little brother keeps coming into my bedroom. Pain in the bum. Maybe you'd be better off asking someone else. Ask Lucy. She's standing under the clock tower. Hey, they they were definitely look like eyes. Oh, a cutscene. We can finally pass through the clock tower to the north side of the village. How exciting! I can't wait to see what's on in store for us there. You're a different person. Anyway, we need to do uh, something here. Gizmos. It's got small eyes. And then let's just quickly save. While I scroll to the next page of my walkthrough. There's a bunch of journal entries here, which apparently we just don't get told about. Anyway, uh, the lamp right there, the stone thing there, and whatever is on the floor right there, and then, um, well, we've gone into like a new area, a different place, the village. So, and I've recorded a bunch with, uh, without, and with my microphone to say. So, um, I think I will just end off here and carry on later on. So this has been some more Professor Layton McGurry's Village, my name is Peter Pellis, also known as the Dislike Man. Thank you very much for watching, round of applause, been a wonderful audience, I love you all. I'll see you later, and goodbye.